you are out like a light, I swear. Uh, we'll give us some time here for everyone to show up before I begin. It's starting to farm in. It's a little bit silly. <laughs> Welcome, come in, start to end up. I think I posted a poll in this, and I don't know if it shows on there about you know who you favor more of the Holly or King. So be sure to put your votes on that. And I'll start this discussion, give it a few more minutes after seven, because some people probably don't realize this has already gone live. But and I'll start my little talk about this. It won't be too long because I know some people are already celebrating Yule today. Or getting ready to head out for the holidays as this will start this weekend. As you can see, my little helper has already fallen asleep. He was loafing on my cape, but now he's he's all fast asleep. <sighs> little tripper, Marty. <laughs> Well, I don't. I know that I'm pretty sure. I think it was Heather that posted it. Uh, that as we're getting to the full moon, there's also going to be uh, the meteor shower, which I don't know if we'll be able to see here in North Dakota because I know there's a bit of a snowstorm that's coming in. Of course, never fails. It's kind of eager to see it too. Now it'll be easy with the fact that it's going to be cold out as well as snow, but. It is Yule, of course. <sighs> so I've I hope blessed Yule, everyone. I I hope I don't know if anyone is celebrating it right now, but if you are, I hope you're having a wonderful time. I know some of you will be hellin' out for Christmas over the course of the week. This is coming up here on Tuesday. I think this is the second time we've done a, a live event. I think Heather was the first one that did this a few months ago. <sighs> but I hope you like what you see as I've gotten all dressed out for this. Give it a few more minutes here. Don't be shy. If you want to ch chat, by all means, do so.
few more minutes. That's the sleep cord. Oh, you're awake. <laughs> well, I thought you were going to help you with this. Are you going to sleep through all this? All right. <sighs> well, I, I welcome. Rachel, Jesse, Josie here for the to coming to live from Lion Arts Sacred Grove to talk about that of the Holly King. You know, it's not just only the history maybe, but also the fact of, of course, the struggle, the story that was between the Holly and the Old King that has been common among the Celtic faiths of, of neo-paganism that has aged over the ages long ago. Um, it was during Legend of Bell between the Holy King and the Old King. These two mighty rulers fought for supremacy as the wheel of the year turned each season. At the winter solstice of or Yule, the Old King conquers the Holy King and then reigns until Midsummer, or Litha. Once Midsummer solstice arrives, the Holy King returns to do battle with the Old King and defeats him. In, in legends of some belief systems, the dates of these events are shifted, and these this is where more, it's more common for at least around here from what I've always have known. The battle takes place at the equinoxes, so if you want to think about it, that the old king is at his strongest during midsummer, or Litha, and the holy king is dominant during Yule. So from a folklore or agricultural standpoint, the interpretation seems to make sense. I mean, if you want to think about it, especially the fact that the Holy King will eventually become Santa Claus, more on that later, that floats well, as well as the fact that from an agricultural standpoint, since especially around here in North Dakota, you know, most farmers finish the harvest in October, November, just before that of Yule in December, ready to be ready for that of winter. In some Wiccan traditions, the Old King and the Holy King are seen as the dual aspects of the Horn God, each of these twin aspects rulers of the half of the year, battles for the favor of the goddess, and then retires to nurse his wounds for the next six months until it's time for him to reign once again. This is also the time of the old age as the Holy King is dying. Both the Oak and Holy Kings are the Horn God, my dear Karanos, the Celtic version of the Green Man, the Wild Lord of the Hunt. The process starts again at the solstice as they fight for the hand of the Earth Maiden, Lady Sedruen. The fight is between the light and the dark half of the year. The Oak King at the time of the year has suffered a wound, the summer solstice and his energy dies down. The Old King and the Holy King battle each other at the solstices, so the Old King has suffered his mortal wound, which he will not recover from. In the winter solstice, the Holy King's energy is defeated, and the Old King's energy is triumphant. But once again, those days do vary. Hence, the Old King can take the crown and woo the Spring Maiden, the Spring Maiden is the Lady Serdwin, also known in Anglo-Saxon as Eshoth, the Goddess of Spring. She and, and the Maybon meet now as the Spring Equinox, as the masculine and feminine energies mix to bring forth the fertile season. Well, hello, Lynn. Nice to meet you. Glad you can make it. Just getting started here on the whole story about it, about the Holy King and the Old King. 
um, a couple of years ago at North Dakota Grand Sabbath, I actually did a live battle of sorts between the Holly King and the Oak King, and then Wu in the hand as Lady Sutherland came out. Um, King Henry the uh, King Henry the Eighth of England actually wrote an interesting poem about the Holly King. Green growth the holly, so do, doth the ivy, through winter back. Through winter blasts blow, never so high, green groweth the holly. As holly groweth green and never changeth to, so I am, holly hath been, into lady true. As holly groweth green and the ivy all alone, when flowers cannot be seen, and green with leaves be gone. Now that is commonplace for that in the Celtic, because the fact that when fall happens, all the foliage dies off, save for one, that of the pine. Because although granted some pine trees will shed their their pine needles, they still remain green. When the even when the snow falls, they still remain green regardless. And that's why they see seen in, in aspects of the solstices. That is why the green is the of the holly green. Holly king is that of Priam. Of course, the holly and the ivy is the one best known for the Christmas carols, which states, quote, the holly and the ivy, when they are both full grown, and of all the trees, there is the wood, the holly bears the crown. The legends of the oak and the holly king, whenever, whichever names we give to the masculine gods of fertility and vegetarian wax and wane into the air. Much confusion arises from the fact that most of the trees of the Celtic moons of the oak in June, but this is the time when he suffered a mortal wound and the, by the Holly King, and it's the Holly's energy that wins the day. In the winter solstice, we see the rising of the Oak King's energy and the dying down of the Holly King's, which that makes sense, because of course when we come to spring, that is when all the snow begins melting, all the trees begin blooming, all the animals that of the old king return to speak out. They are boasting that of the old king's return and the, the passing of the holy king. In many of these early pagan legends, presents are given to the children or young families who represent abundance and fertility. After all, this is the time of rebirth of the sun. Presents were exchanged and honored that rebirth and to give wishes and to hopes to the person receiving the gift or abundance and fertility in the coming year. Now, don't assume that fertility means giving birth to a child. Remember, these people had to live off the earth and the crops they grew. I mean, they didn't have the convenience of Walmart back then. <laughs> They didn't have grocery stores or, or the corn trot down by food of their family. So, in most cases, the fertility was for the coming and growing season. Because back then, it was when winter hit its hardest. And, you know, sometimes those winters was the worst. You didn't know if you were going to make it to the next day. You weren't so sure if that food that you had stocked away, that you harvested, would last. And you had a hope that it would. Or that spring would come and Dole King would be pleasant that they, you can be have the new crops anew. Santa, of course, didn't become a Christian figure until the third century with Nicholas, the Bishop of Myra. He lived on what was no, was known on the coast of Turkey. Nicholas suffered for his faith and was exiled and imprisoned. After his release, Nicholas attended the Council of Nicaea in AD 325. He died December 6 AD, which became a festive day to honor his, this bishop and his life. It is a day recognized by many European countries as St. Nicholas Day. Yeah, that's where the nickname St. Nick comes from. His parents died in an epidemic while Nicholas was still young. Obeying Jesus' words is to sell what you own and give the money to the poor. Nicholas used his whole inheritance to assist the needy, the sick, and the suffering. Many stories are told of his generosity and caring, especially his protection and care of his children. Retold because of his life work, many of the synonymous with Santa Claus, 
Though many of the stories we told today cannot be verified and are likely just oral stories that were created to entertain children and to further incorporate pagan legends with Christian figures. Most notably is that that uh, that stop animation, of course, kind of worked in the same principle. You know, the put one foot in one of the other. Yeah, the, the same principle worked there where basically he grew up and he, he offered presents. And it's a possible point, the one first Santa, because Santa is a culmination of mythological legends and stories, but many of the earlier pagan stories and legends we can find pieces of Santa were from the Celtic and Scandinavian mythologies. And a lot of it, of course, came from most of that of the Holy King. So, for Yule, there's, of course, there's numerous activities. Because when it's here, and even though snow hasn't fallen or has fallen, there's definitely the chill in the air. You can use the cold colors to decorate your altar, such as blues and silvers and whites. Also find ways to include the reds, whites, and greens of the season. Evergreen bowls never go out of style, so add some dark greens as well. In modern pa pagan magical practice, red is often in association with passion and sexuality. However, for some people, red indicates prosperity. In chakra work, it's of course red is connected with the root chakra, which is, is of course the base of the spine. If you're using white on your altar at Yule, consider incorporating it into rituals and focus on purification or your own spiritual development. Hang white snowflakes and, and stars around your home as a way in, in keeping the spiritual environment clean. Add plump white pills filled with herbs on, on your couch to create a quiet, sacred space for, for your meditation. Since winter solstice is the season of the sun, gold is associated with the solar power and energy. If your tradition honors the return of the sun, why not hang some gold around your house as a tribute? Use a gold candle to represent the sun on your altar. Cover your altar with a white cloth, with a cloth of cool color, and then add candles with a variety of different wintry shades. Use like candles, silvers, and golds. Sparkles also doesn't help. Try incorporating sacred plants associated with the winter solstice as well. Evergreen like pines, fir, juniper, and cedar are all part of the evergreen family. They're typically associated with the themes of protection and prosperity, as well as that of the continuation of life and renewal. Hang a sprig of holly in your house to ensure the good luck and safety of your family. Wear it as a charm or, or as a holy water, holy water, which is properly read as holy water. Yeah, a good way I've always have learned also, especially if there is like a lunar, equi lunar eclipse is happening, Get that snow, get that snow up and melt it, and keep it. And there's your holy water right there. I've done that a couple times, and it's, I, matter of fact, I still have a couple samples of it. Use birch branches to craft your own besom for magical workings, and in spells, ritual, rituals related to enchanters, renewal, purification, fresh starts, and new beginnings. Now, there's no science you can't you can't put things in your altar as long as you got the space. Consider some of these items in your aspect decor. Fruits and nuts, for example. Add bowls of winter nuts, like walnuts, pecans, hazelnuts, and fresh fruits such as orange and apples for your altar. Mistletoe, which symbolizes fertility and abundance, is often associated with the winter holidays around the world. Kissing under one's mistletoe is found associated with the Greek festival of Saturnella and later with the primitive marriage rites. They probably originated from two beliefs. One belief is that the power to bestow fertility is often believed that during from which the mistletoe would promise a life-giving power. In Scandinavia, mistletoe was considered a plant of peace, which, which under enemies could decorate or a truce or warring spouses kiss and make up later. In 18th century, English created a certain magical appeal with the kissing ball. Snowflakes, icicles, and even a bowl of snow can come in handy for wintertime magic. Candy canes, although they're typically associated with Christmas holiday, candy canes can also be used as magic as a way to direct energy. Bells are often included in pagan practice, 
as a way of driving away e evil spirits, but you can also use them in a method for bringing harmony over magical space. Although, one thing to note, as the fact that I do have a dear sister who is a fairy, be careful with the bells. Fairies do not like that, of course. Sun wheels and other solar symbols are a great way to establish your connection to the sun as it begins a journey back to the Earth. And of course, as we've had an, as an event earlier this month, or I think it was like a few weeks ago, as a matter of fact, of course, the Yule Log. Get your best log, chop it out, and burn it to give the prosperity towards Yule. So with that, uh, that was my little presentation about that to the Holy King. Is there any questions? Do you have any questions? Hmm? No? Any questions out there? I think I'll plan to probably upload this to the Great North Pregnant Podcast as well. I haven't done that at posting in a while. And now it's kind of doing this one live. It kind of makes me feel about doing this more. And now at least I can get an audience instead of where I have to drive all the way into town. But well, thank you, Kim. I know Marty is a great helper. He's a great helper. But, you know, understand also the fact that that when you see it where the wind, where the weather changes, the the leaves die off or blossom again, know that there is the two sides of the horn that is battling it out. Or it's like I saw one picture, especially show it, there are wrestling, which kind of especially in, in – October, especially, I must make feel that they're just going back and forth on each other. <laughs> Who has the upper hand? But know that, that the Holly King and the Oak King are battling it out to gain the upper hand. Well, thank you, Jesse, so much. That is great to know that I'm a good storyteller. <laughs> I hope my, I know my, my sister Thoreau would be really proud of that. But yeah, that's I hope that you all have a wonderful Yule and Christmas as we come awake and a happy new year on top of it. And that you all have gotten good uh, bar harvest ready food. Don't have to go out too much. I was happy to do this here at home for that reason too, because I didn't want to go driving Fargo as, you know, there's probably last minute sharpers all about. I feel more comfortable at home doing it here too. And I can at least dress up more too. <laughs> You know, and if you have any other suggestions of me, any other live presentations, especially with the gods or any myths and legends, be sure to do about that because I, I enjoy telling about these stories so much. Thank you very much, Rachel. That's so much, so much for the comments, so much. So, I think I will end it here for now. You all have a wonderful Yule, merry meet, merry parts, and merry meet again. And as Karen will say, I shall see you that in the forest. <laughs>